Hi, and thanks for joining us. This is the World News on Television Nigerian. I am Priscilla Iwer. The U.S. Department of Justice has said it will reveal a key name sought by people suing Saudi Arabia for alleged involvement in September 11th attacks. It says the information will be shared with lawyers representing the victims' families. It is unclear if the person's identity will become public. Fifteen of the 19 Al-Qaeda hijackers who state the attacks were Saudis. In 2004, the September 11th commission set up by Congress found no evidence that the Saudi government founded Al-Qaeda. However, a 2012 report by the Federal Bureau of Investigation said the agency was investigating Fadda al Tumari and Omar Ahmed Alba Yomi Saudi's nationals who had allegedly helped the attackers. The common speaker John Barkal has vowed creativity if Parliament in Boris Johnson ignores a law designed to stop a no-deal Brexit, stating that the only possible Brexit was won backed by members of Parliament, a new law passed before the suspension of Parliament forces the Prime Minister to seek a delay until 31st January 2020 unless a deal or no-deal exit is approved by members of Parliament by 19th October. Prime Minister has said he would rather be dead in a ditch than ask for a delay. Responding to Burkow's commitment, Tory Brexiter MP Sir Barnard Jenkins said the role of the Speaker had become irretrievably politicized and radicalized. Meanwhile, Downing Street has announced Johnson will travel to Luxembourg on Monday to hold talks with European Commission President Jean Claude Juncker and Country's Prime Minister Xavier Bettel. The French capital is seeing huge jams and massive crowds on the few metro lines running as transport workers strike against planned pension reform. Ten of Paris' 16 lines were shot and service on the others were disrupted. Many workers circled, worked and stayed at home while free rides were on offer on transport operator Raps Emop and Eurobike and Scooter networks. The strike, the biggest since 2007, is the first big act against President Macron's plan for a universal pension. It would replace dozens of different pension schemes for different professions. Members of all their professions, including lawyers, airline staff, and medical workers, have called for more strikes starting on Monday. People campaigning over the high levels of violence against women in South Africa have taken their protests to the financial heart of the country. Hundreds have gathered outside a Johannesburg stock exchange to call on the country's big firms to do more to tackle gender inequality. Recent protests have been triggered by the rape and murder of 19-year-old Yuni Nene Marwatiana in Cape Town. Over 41,000 people were raped in South Africa in the year from the April 2018, which amounts to more than one rape every 15 minutes. Police statistics also show that eight women are murdered every day in the country. There was a somber mood at the protest, which brought traffic to a standstill in Johannesburg's Santan district. A fire in a Brazilian hospital has killed at least nine people, according to local media. Patients from the private Bardem Hospital in northern Rio de Janeiro were evacuated as thick smoke spread through the building on Thursday night. People on stretchers filled the nearby streets before being moved to an alternative location. Some of the patients had been in intensive care unit. Firefighters arrived on the scene and the blaze was under control two hours later, according to local media. The hospital's management said an investigation is underway and the fire was believed to be caused by a short circuit in the generator. It was 25 degrees Celsius in Tokyo, but snow fell 
in well-ordered flurries at a canoeing event in the Japanese capital. It was in freak weather, but the latest innovation being tested by 2020 Olympics organizers, hoping to keep spectators cool and comfortable when the games take place next summer. Around 300 kilograms of artificial snow was sprayed over stands at the Sea Forest Waterway venue. The goal is to see if it could lower heat and humidity levels. Tokyo regularly sees temperatures of 35 degrees Celsius and 80% humidity in July, prompting concerns that spectators could suffer heat stroke. And that's all we have for you on the World News on Television Nigeria. And many thanks for watching. I am Priscilla Iwurm. Do join us for the 8 p.m. news.